Welcome to Sked Live. Today is Thursday, September 29th. I am Maya Miskew, and here's what is making news now. Hurricane Ian's winds strengthened to 70 miles per hour this morning, still categorizing as a tropical storm as it moved over central Florida. The storm is expected to reach hurricane strength again as it moves towards the Atlantic Ocean today. The storm made landfall on Florida's west coast as a Category 4 hurricane on Wednesday and is one of the most powerful storms to hit the U.S. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis told a news conference there were two deaths that were presumably caused by Ian, but have yet to be confirmed. Seven people were rescued by U.S. Coast Guard air crews in four different rescue missions on Wednesday night. Over two million people in the state are without power as of last night. President Joe Biden has approved a major disaster declaration for, for Florida residents. DeSantis said, we have never seen a flood, like, flood event like this before. Crews in Halifax are working hard to clean up after Hurricane Fiona's aftermath. Thousands of trees were brought down during the storm and hundreds of poles are in need of repair. Nova Scotia Power Storm Lead Matt Drover said there are more than 1,400 people in the field working to restore power as quickly as possible. Drover said the majority of the province should have power by the end of tomorrow, but some areas were hit harder than others and may not receive power until early next week. Erica Fleck, the Assistant Chief of, of Emergency Management for Halifax Regional Fire and Emergency, said food and water are currently the most significant needs. Fleck said the municipality is working with Feed Nova Scotia, as well as volunteers and food trucks to make necessities available. Russian President Vladimir Putin will sign documents tomorrow to proclaim Russia's annexation of four Ukrainian regions. Moscow is rushing to lock in territorial claims where the Ukrainian army is close to reversing. The Russian government says this legal step will lead to the annexation of 15% of Ukrainian territory. This confirms that Putin is doubling down on the war despite this month's mi military reversal. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky will meet with his secretary and events chiefs for an emergency meeting tomorrow. Zelensky says the step by Putin has killed chances of reviving peace talks. That's all for international news. Here's Kendra Young with your local and national news. Thank you, Maya. Toronto police are searching for a hit and run driver after a woman was struck in North York. The driver was last seen in a red vehicle on Wilson Avenue and Haymarket Road east of Highway 400 Wednesday evening. The 53-year-old woman is now suffering from long life altering leg injuries. If you have any information, please call at 416-808-2222 or call Crime Stoppers at 416-808-7260. Statistic Canada has officially released its gross domestic product and it is higher than expected. In July, the Canadian economy grew by 0.1%, outperforming its preliminary estimate that was pointed to a contraction of 0.1%. CIPC Senior Economics Andrew Graham says that policymakers will likely raise interest rates in October, but with consumer spending weakening, banks will eventually take a pause in the rate hike. Tomorrow marks the day for National Truth and Reconciliation, also known as Orange Shirt Day. All flags at Humber will be lowered to honor the tragic incident of residential schools and their lasting impact on Indigenous communities. Students and employees are encouraged to wear an orange shirt and tag at Humber Indigenous on Instagram and at Humber Indig on Twitter. That is all for local and national news. Here's Maya with sports and entertainment. Thanks, Kendra. Aaron Judge made baseball history last night when he scored his 61st home run against the Blue Jays tying Roger Maris's record for most home runs during a regular season in the American League. Judge's historic run contributed to the Yankees' 8-3 win over the Blue Jays, preventing them from clinching their potential playoff spot yet again. The earliest the Jays could earn a wild card spot is today if the Baltimore Orioles lose their game against the Boston Red Sox. Otherwise, they'll be looking at a scenario where the Orioles need to lose against the Yankees and the Jays need to beat the Red Sox when they kick off their final homestand of the season in Toronto tomorrow night. Nui Blanche returns to in-person exhibitions on October 1st. Humber College Lakeshore Campus is designated to be the first ever Etobicoke hub as part of city officials' plans to extend Nui Blanche into the greater Toronto regions. Given the expansion of the cultural hub at Lakeshore Campus, the location was deemed a good fit by the City of Toronto. Nui Blanche will display 17 art installations across the campus from independent artists 
and the college's fellowship students, including Mercedes Shanishnik, a recent graduate of Humber's Bachelor of Industrial Design program. To know more about Nuit Blanche at the Lakeshore campus, read Veronica David's story on Skedline.com. The Grammy-winning musician and West Coast rapper Coolio died at his friend's house last night at the age of 59. The official cause of death is still pending. Coolio rose to fame with his song Gangsta's Paradise in 1995. The song was featured in the movie Dangerous Minds, which awarded him the 1996 Grammy for Best Rap Solo Performance. Coolio is being remembered by colleagues in the music industry. I Am I A Miss You, that is what is making news today. For full coverage and content, go to Skedline.com or check us out on Twitter and Instagram at Skedline.